Hey guys, Jam here with another book review. This time I'm going to be reviewing Imposter by Suzanne Winacker. I rate this an 8.5 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. I've been wanting to read this for a while now, and I finally was able to get my hands on it. Um, this is the first book in the Varian series. The second book's Defector, which I'm hoping to get to read. This will not be a spoilers review, so on to the synopsis. Tessa is a variant, able to absorb the DNA of anyone she touches and mimic their appearance. Shunned by her family, she spent the last two years training with the forces of extraordinary abilities, a secret branch of the FBI. When a serial killer rocks a small town in Oregon, Tessa is given a mission. She must impersonate Madison, a local teen, to find the killer before he strikes again. Tessa hates everything about being an imposter. The stress, the danger, the deceit. But, love play, but loves playing the role of a normal girl. Disguised as Madison, she finds friends, romance, and the kind of loving family she'd do anything to keep. Amid action, suspense, amid action, suspense, and a ticking clock, this superhuman arrives at a very human conclusion. Even a girl who can look like anyone struggles the most with being herself. So in the book, for some reason, this just really reminds me of um, the Infernal Devices, there's this girl named Tessa who can shapeshift into people, you know, totally normal. So she's a part of the FEA, aka Federation Forces with Extraordinary Abilities, which is another branch of the FBI in this book, a secret branch. It's people who are variants are people who have, um, abilities called variations. And so there's a lot of people. There's her best friend Holly, this guy named Tanner, Alec, Kate, and Major, and a whole lot of others. So there's this serial killing happening in Oregon, and Tessa is sent out onto the field to do a mission to find out who the serial killer is. She has to take place of a girl named Madison who has been killed by the serial killer. Now there's a whole lot of leads of like who could be the killer or not, because he's already hit four people, and um, it's like really important that they find and get to the bottom of it. Now there's, you know, Alec, this guy who's three years older than Tessa, who's around 16 at uh, this time. And so there's like, you know, that sexual tension, the romance, but then there's all like, I can't be with you, I'm going out with Kate kind of thing, and it's, it was totally, like, frustrating for me to, like, oh my god, you guys love each other, just go out already, oh my god, just date, and so it was, like, really frustrating for me, and when I, so there was that really, really frustrating romance right there, it was like, oh my god, it's right in front of you, and just don't do anything about it, and Tessa, she, as Madison, is surrounded by a loving family and friends, and she wasn't before, because her mother, like, her father and brother left them when she was young. Her mother abandoned her around two years ago, and she, when she left to the FEA, and she hasn't had contact with her mother since, and her mother just does not like her at all, and it's just so, like, heartbreaking, in a sense, that, like, her mother, like, abandoned her, family abandoned her, didn't care about her at all, Think she's a freak because of her abilities. And while there are others in the FEA, like Holly, who has a loving family who loves her despite her variation. So there's that. So throughout the book, they find out a lot of things. And since I won't... There was a lot of shocking things. A lot of things that were like kind of like foreshadowed on who the killer was. So I'm not going to say anything. In the end, the end was like sad, but then there was, like, that relief. There was a relief for me. But I can't wait to read the second book. That's all I really have to say about Imposter. Suzanne Winacker, 8.5 out of 10. Now, because my phone is not working, I gotta do this the ratchet way and use a camera. The next book I'm gonna be reading is... Oh my god, you can't even see that. King of Bad by Kai Strand. It is the first book of the Supervillain Academy. And she's a book 
I mean, she's an author who has already come out with her book. Um, King of Bad already came out, um, let's see, Ju July 1st of 2013. And there's the second book to it called Polar Opposites. Oh, God, that's really bad quality. Polar Opposites, which is the second book of the series. So, um, Kai Shan already sent me the arcs for both books. Um, so there's that I have to look forward to. Um, the second book, Polar Opposites, came out June 1st of 2014. So you guys already got a glimpse of the covers. Let me read you the author bio. Then the, um, blurbs of the first and second book in that order. When her children were young and electricity winked out, Kai Strand gathered her family around the fireplace and they told stories, one sentence at a time. Her boys were rather fond of the ending. And then everybody died. The end. Now an award-winning children's author, Kai crafts fiction for kids and teens to provide an escape hatch from their reality. When a selection of novels for young adults and middle grade readers and short stories for the younger ones, Kai entertains children of all ages and their adults. Learn more about Kai and her w books on her website, www.kaistrand.com. Now, the first, um, the blurb of the first book, King of Bad. Jeff Mean would rather set fires than follow rules or observe curfew. He wears his bad boy image like a favorite hoodie. That is until he learns he has superpowers and is recruited by Supervillain Academy, where you learn to be good at being bad. In a school where one kid can evaporate all the water from your body and the girl you hang out, you hang around with can perform psychic sex in your head. Bad takes on a whole new meaning. Jeff wonders if he's bad enough for SVA. He may, he may never find out. Classmates vilify him when he develops good manners. Then he's kidnapped by those closest to him and left to wonder who is good and who is bad. His rescue is the climatic episode and balances good and evil in the super world. The catalyst. The, girls he, the girl he's crushing on. A girlfriend and balancing the supers is good, right? Or is it bad? Now, for the second book. The supers are balanced. Academies have altered their curriculum to teach both sides of the superpower spectrum. All's well in the superworld, right? When, Mystique, when Mystic kidnaps Oceanus, Jeff learns it isn't all right. Turning to the newly balanced superpowers for assistance, he panics to find they've done nothing to rescue Oceanus. When no ransom rescue follows, he worries Mystic's plan never included returning his girlfriend. Frustrated, he's forced to work with the only super willing to help, Oceanus' ex-villain, ex-boyfriend, Set. Mis Mystic isn't the only one hiding something. Nothing about Jeff is balanced. Temper flares result in scorched clothing or flying furniture, and his charm has become an indiscri indiscriminating people magnet. Jeff is convinced, or maybe just hopeful, that his lack of self-control is directly related to Oceanus being gone. But will he and Set find her before Jeff loses completely, loses control completely, or will they find her alive? So, I will be reading the first book, um, King of Bad by Kai Strand, the Supervillain Academy Book 1. I will be doing each of these reviews separately, um, just to give you a heads up. Unfortunately, since my phone really just does not work, touchscreen doesn't work at all anymore, and you can't do anything to it. So, we're going to have to, whenever I get an ebook, we're going to have to deal with this, using the cover like this, with a really, really bad quality like that. So, I'm very sorry, but it this is all I really have. I've gone the ratchet route. So, that's all I really have to say. Um, that's the next book I'm going to be reading, and I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Later!